Hello, grace and peace be multiplied to you in Jesus' name. My name is Flourish Peters. I'm the lead pastor and the apostolic head of the Logic Church Global. Logic is an acronym for love of God in Christ. What you're about to listen to will change your life completely because it is the word of His grace. I commend you to God and the word of His grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the saints. Invite your friends, invite your family members to listen to this word. It will bless you. I'll see you in a bit. Genesis chapter 3, can we stand as we go straight to God's word? Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, Genesis 3, 21, Genesis 3, 21. Can you read God's scripture today? Now, nod your neighbor and say, don't distract me. Say it again, don't distract me. You know, there are people who come to church with their best friends and you talk throughout the service, you miss the point. You know, I know you start asking me interesting questions, not foolish questions, two days later. And I'm like, were you... Like who wrote the book of John? <laughs> John. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Let's read this one verse and then we read out of Romans chapter 8. First service was really beautiful. Believe in God for, for more. Glory to God. Amen. Let's read this in concert. One, two, three, go. Unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. 14 says, one, two, three, go. For as many as are led by the Spirit of, they are the sons of God. Did you see that? Verse 15 now says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry. Let me show you how to read it. We'll personalize it. I have not received. I have received. Can you do that now? At the count of three. One, two, three, go. I have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I have received the spirit of adoption whereby I cry. Daddy, daddy. Let's see this in TPT. TPT says, you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into fear of never being good enough. That's the spirit of religious duty. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God and you will never feel orphaned. For as he rises up within us, our spirit join him in saying the words of tender affection. Beloved Father. Today I want to talk to you about the fatherhood of God. Because in sonship is important that you know the fatherhood of God. Because the son gets his identity from his father. The father declares the son, the son declares the father. Father, thank you for the kind of unction that makes teaching and preaching easy. Open up our eyes to see Jesus. Let the power of the spirit, the warmth of your presence. Spirit of God will give you permission to hijack this service like you usually do. But open up our eyes to see Jesus. Let transformation take place. We pray the will of the father, the work of the son and the witness of the spirit. In Jesus' name, bless every heart and we rebuke the spirit of distraction. In Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me start by saying God is God to everybody but Father to some. God is God to everybody but Father to some. God is what? God to everybody but his father to some. So is God to every. The Bible says the rain shines upon the just and the unjust. God sends rain in his position, his attribute as God. He sends rain to everybody, but in relationship, he has it with sons. How do I know that? As many as received in John chapter 1, verse 12, to them he gave power. The power there is authorization. To them he gave authorization. He gave right standing. He gave legal binding to become sons of God. The scripture we read before now says the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are now children of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 verse 14. Put verse 14 for me. Verse 14 says something. For as many as are led by the spirit of God are what? The sons of God. We stay in sonship series because, listen, listen to me. The fatherhood of God is important because the son gets his identity from the father the son gets his identity from the father the bible never called us christians jesus or the apostle never called us christians he called us sons believers 
beloved. Sons, believers, beloved. That's what we are called. It is the men in Antioch who saw the behavior of, Christ, of the believers and said they are behaving like Christ. But you never see Paul say, and I speak to you Christians. He will say, I speak to you brethren. He will call you the beloved. You see what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with the name Christian. But what I'm saying is that the multitude cannot name you. It is your father that names you. Your multitude, social media cannot name you. It is your father that names you. So the identity of a son is gotten from the father. I repeat, there's nothing wrong with the name Christian because it just means that they were behaving like Christ. But your behavior doesn't tell your identity in Christ. It is your position in Christ that determines your identity in Christ. Are you listening to me? You see what I'm saying? So there's nothing wrong with the name Christian, but what, what did God call you? He called you beloved son. He called you accepted and the beloved. So it, the identity of a son is from what? The father, not from the street. So first thing, stop flowing with the name that they have called you. Do not accept any name that they have called you apart from the name that God has called you. And please do not accept the name that you have called yourself to. Because you have called yourself certain names by your behavior. But the problem is, but that's not who I am. That's how you are behaving. And people are going to call you and address you in that light. So I'm saying breaking news, stop accepting your behavior. Accept your position. Your position will fix your behavior. It is the father that names the child, not society. That's why your AKA and your aliases are not in your birth certificate. They're not in your international passport. Your Instagram name is not in your passport. So when we say Max Sam, it's not in her passport. What's your name? Max Sam. So it's not in her passport. MVP. It's not in her passport. When you now check the passport, you now see some very booty chukwe meka That is the real name. Society can't name you. It's the father that names the child. So the reason the fatherhood of God is important to sonship series is that you get your identity from where? I can hear you from where? Not society. There's a man in scripture, and I think it's in the book of Luke. Gabriel, yeah? His name is Angel Gabriel. There was a guy called Zaki, Zachariah. Zachariah was the high priest. Should I go there? Okay, I'll go there. Let me see. So, let me see. If I have to look, look one from, from, from verse 62. Zachariah and Elizabeth were barren, believing God for a child. Zachariah was not a floor member, he was the high priest. So Zaki was in the Holy of Holies here. And then Gebo showed up. His name is Gabriel. And Gabriel is the information minister. Every time you see Gabriel in scripture, he comes with information. It was Gabriel that God used to send to speak to Mary, it was Gabriel that dealt with Daniel. Gabriel is showing up before Zachariah and says, Ah, God sends me a word to you. Your wife will conceive. Zachariah says, Hey, stop it. Huh? We are old. It's no longer a prayer point for us. If God doesn't do it, it's fine. Zachariah said, hey, Gabriel said, Me. Do you know who I am? I am Gabriel, minister in charge of information. Let me explain something to you. When Daniel prayed, it was Gabriel that God sent. The prince of Pesha, Pesha saw Gabriel and knew that this guy is information man and cannot fight. Will not fight. That's why he withstood Gabriel, knowing that in heaven you don't break ranks. They don't call you to sing and you start preaching. Are you listening to me? So he saw Gabriel. The reason he withstood Gabriel because he knew that this guy is in charge of information. He's not going to change to be warrior angel. Michael figured that Gabriel is not back. Something is stopping Gabriel. So Michael went and displaced the prince of Persia, but Michael did not deliver the message. Gabriel delivered the message. Order, structure, system, discipline. But you as the believer, you are not Daniel. So no prince of Persia can stop your prayer point. Uncle Dan was not born again. 
because he was on a different train. You and I, we are seated in Christ. Heavenly places, far and above principalities and you understand it now. Just wanted to deal with that. So this whole idea of 21 days fasting and prayer, the template is not there. It's Daniel that started it. The Bible says from the first day he prayed, God had answered. I'm not saying don't fast if you want to fast or don't go, but I'm just saying to take a template that is from a man that is not born again and then impose it that as I pray for 21 days, every prince of Pasha, like you did it for Daniel, you and Daniel are not in the same classroom. The fatherhood of God. We're coming. Thank you. So Gabriel told him, you're going to have a child. And Zachariah said, I'm not sure. So guess what Gabriel did? Gabriel said, ah, before you use reggae, spoil my blues. Made him deaf and dumb. Don't talk. Don't. Because the truth of the matter is that he was a priest. And perhaps he had the ability to spoil by unbelief. So the truth is, if you can't speak right, shut up. If you cannot speak faith, shut up. So the dude became deaf and dumb for a season. Now the child is born. They have to name the child. The mother said his name is John. How she knew, we don't know. So the family member said his name is a strange name. It has not been in the family before. Usually we recycle names in the family. But this one is a new name. And so they said, this is very powerful. I don't care if he's deaf and dumb. Let's communicate with him because the father. The father names the child. So they hey, Uncle Ko. <laughs> yeah, and they made sign to his that's it now. Sign to his father. How would how he would have him named? So he now said, next verse, and he asked for a writing to you. So, <laughs> so they brought a writing table and wrote saying his name is I don't care deaf, dumb. I don't care the state the father is. It is his right to name the child. Not yours. As soon as that was done, the Bible says, next verse, and the old mother, his mouth was opened immediately. His tongue loosed by writing John, which means grace. Here's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Even at baptism, he said, this is my beloved son. So breaking news, God has opened his mouth concerning you. Oh, they didn't like this one. Let me try. I said, God has opened his mouth concerning you. He gave you his identity. Brought you into the palace. So that you can live in the palace of his majesty. So you have an identity. And the identity is where? Is in God. Only the father has the right to name the child. So in the realm of the spirit, bear your father's name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So sonship one is the father has the right to name the child. Nobody don't accept a name, even the name that you have named yourself. The, Jesus is both the image of the father and the prototokos of the believer. That's why Jesus is, in, is interesting to us here. So, you know, this is so powerful. Let me say this. In the world, you can be richer than your father. In the kingdom, you are only as rich as your father. Hey. In the world, you can be richer than your father physically. In the spirit, you are only as rich as the revelation of your father. And this your father owns the heavens and the earth, governor of the galaxies, owner of the Milky Way, landlord of the universe. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and day that do, he says the cattle on the thousand hills are all mine. That's Old Testament. In New Testament, it will be the G wagon and the transportation, the private jets are all mine. That's what he's saying. I have ownership. So you are only as rich as you know your father's wealth. In the kingdom, that's the way to be rich. In the world, you can be richer than your father. But in the kingdom, is how your father is rich. That's, how you, that's why the devil doesn't want you to know your father. 
because he knows how wealthy your father is and knows that the day you know your father is that wealthy end of discussion you cash out so he doesn't want you to know he just wants you to believe that your father is just maybe your father is um, one of those guys let me say this to you when we describe God as mighty and as great it's not for God I hope you know well let me explain when I come and say my father Oh God of the universe, owner of the Milky Ways, the bishop of my soul. I hope that in, I hope you know that information is not for God. No, no. So you both think when you say God, you are the beginning and the end. You say, eh? Now maybe this. I don't know. If like they tell you, you are fine today. Eh? And you, you mean um, am I telling us? No, that's not how God behaves. Though. He knows that information is for you. Are you understanding? So God is not waiting to describe me. You are this. You are that. God says, Oh, Mikey, Eru Jeje, Eru Bobo, Eru Baba. This. God must say, Eh? Now you this. Eh? No. That information <laughs> is not for God. It's for you. God has a healthy self esteem. <laughs> Very healthy. Somebody writes 66 books about himself. You think he doesn't know who he is? He knows he. Is very aware. Yeah. So that information is not for God. So the greatness of Abba is for the prophets of sons. The greatness of Abba is not for Abba. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you understand. So all of that greatness of God is not for God to say, Ah, uh-uh, ah, see me. Started from the grave, now I'm on the top. No. 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 <laughs> The great is not for God. <laughs> it is for who? The believer. Are, are you understanding me? Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay, let me show you. John 1, 16. I want you to see. Keep this scripture because I'll use it at the end. Just keep it somewhere. File it somewhere in your head. It says, and of his fullness have we all received. So, the fullness of God is for the receiving that believers will become recipient of that fullness. He didn't say, and of his fullness, he is now known. He now knows himself. God knows himself. It's whether you know him that is the problem. Of his fullness, we have what? So you are only as full as you are exposed to his fullness. Hey, I'm preaching good. Feel you got it? You're only as full as you are exposed to his fullness great his fullness we have oh you can't hear we have what grace for grace so his fullness is for your benefit his fullness is not for his knowledge father give your people understanding his fullness is not for it's for what let me give you an example so timmy shared the testimony with us a story with us on on thursday really powerful so Timmy has a daughter who went to class without talking to Timmy. Timmy dropped her at school that day. There was no discussion. During the class, she stands up in front of the class and say, tomorrow, my father is bringing pizza for everybody. They say, who's your father? It's Timmy Dacolo. He will bring pizza for everybody. Is he your birthday? No. Is he anniversary? No. But my father will bring pizza. Then went to him and said, Daddy, I told everybody in class, that you will bring pizza for... Timmy said, when I was at... Did you discuss it? it? When I was dropping you in school, did you tell me? Did I get a message from you? Did you send me a memo that this is the plan? Ah, left. Timmy went to sleep. As he dropped the child in the morning, he remembered Akai. These children will discuss. After now. Hey, your daddy is a fake guy. <laughs> so Timmy wore shorts and t-shirt, went to Domino's, packed pizza. And came to class distributed for the class guess what the daughter said i told you that's my daddy timmy dacolo that is a child describing a physical father why timmy's name was at stake son of god our past name is at stake consigning your life he cannot disgrace himself he cannot Timmy said, before the children grow up, say, 
that's your fake father he redeemed himself it was his name at stake it was not the child's name at stake but she bears timid akolo so you are you bear the name of god because you are a son you carry his name his name is at stake so when your child is in problem you are in trouble the fatherhood of god the fatherhood of god so when you are in trouble guess who is in trouble god knows i wish kind of problem with this which daughter which one is daughter don't go do he has to show up he will come out of retirement to redeem himself out he will live ret- to redeem himself the fatherhood are you, are you getting something now he will redeem himself now the problem is a lot of believers don't know the father and once you don't know the father you are limited in your access in your receiving he's done everything but you can't receive because you don't know the father so you don't know what he has once you know the father it's like having a a polygamous home and everybody has a code to collect something every month you are a child but you don't have the code you are limited not because the father has not provided but because the estate manager has not showed you that uh-uh, you have a code here you can receive this too you have benefits here that you're not cashing out from because you don't know that's why the enemy's job is to make sure that the believer so spiritual daddy issues are a product of a misconception of a servant about daddy spiritual daddy issues are born out of a distorted image of abba that came from the servant so he's not there for me he just left me oh that's how, that's how some of you pray you have real spiritual daddy issues god said to me they come to me praying expecting that i will break their heart I couldn't get past it. They, come, they pray. When they are praying, no, but in their prayer, they are expecting that God will not answer. And there's something Funto said at discipleship class on Friday. It's a, a traumatized mind cannot receive truth. Oh, she blessed me. Because I've been dealing with people who are, their mind is traumatized. And what traumatized mind people do, they send their trauma to you. They give you mental abuse. You know why? They, they project it. Thank you. A traumatized mind cannot receive truth. So a mind that has been traumatized about a wrong picture of God. That's what I'm dealing with. Because the mind is messed up. So they will project that trauma to you. So it's not your fault. Just try and help the person. She's traumatized. He's traumatized. A traumatized mind will fight truth. Once you see truth, no. Because she says something so powerful. Something in their mind wants to protect them. In the mind too. The mind itself has a chip to protect them. No exp- yeah. So when you say hi, they say bye. Because there's something. is a traumatized mind. So treat them with love. On that day is a problem. And that's what people are spiritually. So they project that mental abuse. And you can say she's just a quiet person. No, he's just a quiet. No, leave the physical, check the mind. That's where the problem is. The heart is not even the problem, it's the mind. The heart is good, but oh, yeah, where is there's something there? <laughs> and the traumatized cannot accept truth because truth becomes difficult. You are laughing, but a lot of you are like that spiritually. So when we tell you about the reckless love of God, your, your first mind is, hmm, 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 hmm. Where indeed that thing, when we say that thing happened to me, I bet hold on first, so the love, you're not reckless like that. Are you, are you, are you in church? When you get to him, nod your head. Why? Because there is that spiritual daddy issue that is born out of a gross misrepresentation of Abba from a servant. Now that one they pay me pass. Now servant, describe your papa, give you. You chop him. So it is the job of the son to reveal the father. 
So once the son reveals the father, so you can... Jesus, God is not a mystery. He has revealed himself in the son. Are you listening to me? God is not a mystery. He has revealed himself where? In the son. He's in the son. He's not hiding anymore. If you see the son, you see the father. So he has made it easy that I have come as the son. The son is the father in the flesh. The spirit is the father in the believer. Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. God who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto our fathers by the prophet. Next verse. Hath in this last day spoken to us where? By son. Whom he had appointed heir of all things. By whom also he made the word. Next verse. Who being, can we read together? One, two, three, go. Who being the brightness of his glory. The express image of his person. So who's the son? The brightness, the express image. I had a meeting with some of my friends. We were in the restaurant. One child walked past. I looked at my friend. He looked at me. He went again. I looked at my friend. I said, Kunle, you are here. We called him. He said, Kunle, you are here. We saw something like you. You are here. You have done it again. And really, he was around. Because when we saw the son, we saw the father. Carbon. Jesus is the express image. If he's on your WhatsApp group, his DP will be Jesus. If you go to a restaurant where they are serving God, the menu will be Jesus. The water will be Jesus. The dessert will be Jesus. Because Jesus is all God wanted to say. Because he's the word of God. When he said Jesus, there was nothing else to say. Give me the next translation. Just verse 3. The sun is, can we read together? One, two, three, go. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. The exact expression whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, of God's true nature. Women will understand this. You know how you get a good bag and a good shoe and you want them to take your picture. And you take their pictures very well, by the way. When you not give them your phone to take, they will not remove that your bag and your shoe. You will not be saying, why you know? Why didn't you do, put the angle properly? Uh, she will understand. Uh, why did you not put the, Why? So in the Old Testament, they had a blood picture of God. It was not accurate. It was a distorted picture of God. Jesus came not to defend God, but to speak for God and speak as God and speak for himself. So Jesus came to sort out the opinion, I am God. What caused problem? Why do you think they killed him? He came to scatter tables. No, he, he smashed Abraham. Get out before Abraham. I was Moses. Fake guy. Elijah, come base. You, that's what he was doing. Then he now went in John chapter 1, verse 18. He went in, put it there. He says, One, two, three, go. No man has seen God at any time. That's what he said to them. This is Jesus speaking. He now says, The only begotten son who is the who is in the bosom of the uh, bosom of the father had declared him. That means only me can declare God. Nobody has seen him. Forget that Moses. Forget Elijah. For, forget those things. He took them out by this statement. Only me have seen the Father. <laughs> Give me AMPC, this same verse. I like what I love this. No man has ever seen God at any time. The only unique son or the only begotten son who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence, watch, watch this, of the Father. He has declared him, watch this. He has revealed him and brought him out where we he can be seen. So it is Jesus who brought God to the place where you can see him. So if you want to know the father, look at the son. The son declares the father. The father declares the son. So once the son leads you to the father, the father will declare who you are because you are in the son. Did you get what I said? So once the son leads you to the father, the father will declare you as his son because you are in the son. And God cannot love Jesus more than you. Are you learning something? Are you, are you seeing scripture? Give me the next translation quickly. No one has ever dazed upon the fullness of God's splendor except the uniquely beloved son who is cherished by the father and held close to his heart. Now he has unfolded to us the full explanation. Only Jesus can explain God because Jesus is God. I'm saying this because the son gets his identity from the father. And the son is only as rich as Come on, the son is only as rich as Philippians 2 verse 6. Let me read something to you. Philippians 2 verse 6. This is really good stuff. MPC. It says, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attribute which make God, God. That means Jesus has the fullness 
and the attribute of what makes God, God. If you remove Jesus out of the picture, there is no God. K-N-O-W, Jesus. K-N-O-W, God. N-O, Jesus. And fly away, Jesus. Come back, Jesus. Jesus is God. That's really simple for anybody to grasp. You've seen that. Jesus is who? God. And so, the law and the prophets grossly miss. Because there is, let me also deal with it. There's also a notion that the God in the Old Testament upgraded into the New Testament. And repented. So, God just said in Old Testament, ah, ah, I don't, I wicked who? I don't to deal with these people. What am I going to do now? I need to be born again. I need to make up for all the things that I've done. Let me bring them close. No. So at the cross was not when God manifested his love. God has always been love. So God didn't upgrade at the cross. He displayed at the cross. He didn't upgrade iOS in the New Testament. He displayed it in where? At the cross. He's always been God. He's always been grace. I am the God and I change it not. So it's not that the God in the Old Testament. Ah, very harsh. New Testament God, very soft. That Old Testament God, he was not God. He's always been God. He's always been gracious. G-O-D is grace on duty. That's God. Are you listening to me? We read this on Wednesday, Genesis 4. Let me, let me deal with this quickly. Genesis chapter 4. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Amen. Is that how you talk to a God who has short temper? Can you say that to your mom at home? Not after you beat your brother. After you have killed your brother. They now ask, he don't die. You now say, where are you? Am I my brother? Is that how you talk to God? If it was our own version of the Bible that I want to write, the next verse will be, and the indignation of God was rekindled, and the fire of God took his ears out, whilst his neck was being held to the sky, and they stretched him, and the angels of God came upon his waist and removed it. Another one ate his behind. That's what you, that's what you want to see, because you want to describe God as Ahmad Yoha. Just come out straight and say it. The next verse. God, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Next verse. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth heed unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Next verse. See what Cain said. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is enough. It's better. You don't do. What did I do? That's how he was answering God. That's how Cain answered. Next verse. Cain now says, And the Lord said, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. The fatherhood of God. This is the father we have. This person killed. He's saying, Sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So God put on his head, Do not kill him. The man who, the fatherhood of just that small shiki when you want to make it for your Kriguen Joshua and that two egg, one boy the arm when they carry go give a mad job. That, that's what is disturbing your whole family. See, person went kill. What did you do? See the man, that is what the fatherhood of God. Next verse. And Cain went out. He didn't even say, Lord, thank you. I can't, I can't even thank you enough. The thing you have done for me. Oh, I never knew. You forgive me this way. I knew. I know. And he went out of the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east. Next verse. And Cain knew his wife and she, the one that God cursed. The thing is still working. He's doing things. His wife is pregnant. After they cursed him. Maybe Joseph Allah cursed me. 
and bear Enoch and built a city and called the name of the city his son. He built a city after his son. Entered real estate from course. So, it means that these people knew God more than us. God forbid the bad thing. No. So, this king knew that forget it, even if you curse me, your cursing will be a blessing to me. The foolishness of God is stronger than the wisest of men. The curse of God is stronger than the blessedness of men. See what curse produced. So, it, it means that they, they had a different understanding. Because his father would have told him, we messed up. He fixed it. So, they knew their father was a fixer. The fatherhood of <laughs> Of the fatherhood of God. Are you listening to me? His name is Samson. Come, MVP, come. If MVP just tells us tomorrow that his song is coming from this and you want to fight him, you take off the hair, right? If come off the beard, join and what for you? Sharp guy, are you? Anywhere. Valley, Mount Everest, move it out. But they removed Samson's hair and then they left him. Me, I will employ a barber. Anything you see. Not never you know that shaving powder that men use, rub it every morning. Magic powder and wash it. They left something like that. The Bible says, How be it his hair began to grow again. Can't you see something's prayer? He didn't pray for forgiveness at the cross. So. At the cross. He was saying, God, avenge me for my enemies. He didn't say, God, I know they touched my hair. I know I disobeyed you. Oh, let me just give you this one track. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord. Everlasting Father, King of glory, I want to come to you. No protocol. Father, avenge me for my enemies. These people had information about Abba. So I asked God, why did they let his hair grow? Their God does not forgive. So they thought his God will not forgive. So when his hair went off, they knew they thought he was done for. But the Bible says, how be it? His hair began to grow again. I don't know who you are. They've come to you out. They threw you out. They think you will never make it. Think you'll never come back. Let them get ready for your comeback because it will blow their mind. I don't know whose word this is. Get ready for your comeback is what I heard in my spirit. You were out of business all this long, but get ready for your comeback. I hear the Lord say, I'm about to announce your gift, announce your song, your product, and that which you do in this season. The enemy thought they already had you because you messed up, but your God forgives, your God restores, your God justifies, your God is powerful. And what makes him powerful is that he's able to forgive your sins. And he has declared all your sins are forgiven. I will be merciful to your righteousness and your sins and iniquities will I remember no more get ready for restoration with compensation get ready for a new day has come they taught you are down and out they've written your business out written your life out but something is about to happen I feel it in my head I feel it in my way I feel it down to my small little toes God is about to blow their mind if this is your word look for four people tell them I smell restoration I smell restoration Come on, I smell restoration, I smell restoration, I smell restoration. Come on, say it again, I smell restoration. I smell restoration. If this is your word, say thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. See, 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 we just... That's how they counted Samson out. So nobody paid attention to him. And now when he has offended God. Because in their mind, he has destroyed his covenant. Let me put it in New Testament religious, not New Testament, in present day religious term. He has committed his sin that God does not forgive. The unpardonable sin is gone. Not knowing that he's here. Samson just needed a good pastor like me. I would have taught him how to pray. 
that have taught him how to pray. That prayer would have opened his eyes. Father, open my eyes. I decree I'm restored by your grace. He just said, no, Father, I die. But even in that time, he was a shadow and type of Christ. Destroying the law and the prophet. And look at him on the cross like Jesus. The Bible says he killed more people by his death than the people he killed in his lifetime. Look at Jesus. Saved more people by dying on the cross than him just preaching here. Why? Because Samson's position between the pillar. So even that mess, the fatherhood of God made a message out of the mess. He didn't make mess of him. You are getting it. He barred it into the scriptures. The, the barrenness of God. The fatherhood. The asabaristic father. He, he barred it. Say, okay, oh, you have done this. Then the Bible now says, as it was written. Even concerning Jonah's disobedience, as it was written, that the Son of Man shall be in the grave like Jonah in the whale belly, because God barred it. He didn't, God doesn't shame you to change you. No, God no go shame you to change you. No, He barred it. Samson, can you imagine that? One day I went, I said, Wait, what, what is, how is Samson? What was Samson's prayer? Ha. Not father, I have sinned against thee, and the transgression of my heart is a lot unto you, Lord. I pray for you, Lord, that you have grace to forgive me. Lord, may God touch your heart to forgive me. No, 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 no. He didn't waste his time. Father, he's got to beg you to touch your heart to forgive me. The one I've do. Is... Father, he was angry with his enemy. Avenge me for my enemies. So it looks like they. And, and guess what? And for my two eyes. Now the eye they pin now. Look at this. <laughs> that, look at it now. That I may be avenged of the Philist. And for my two eyes. They touch my eye. He pin now. He didn't even think of I offended God. No, no, no. So it's like they knew the. They had information. They knew something. That it would be a shame. That if we're in this dispensation. We don't know it. We're a disgrace to the finished work. Because Jesus had not died then. They knew something. Now he has died for you and me. We don't know it. Then there's a big problem. The fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. Tell your neighbor, I have a father. Say it again. Say, I have a father. Who is gracious and kind. So the fatherhood of God tells you how far you can go and shows you how to turn back if you go offset. Ask the prodigal son. He knew the father. The fatherhood of God shows you how far. That means the more of the father you know, the more far you can go. Ah! You go farther by the revelation of the father and they preach. Pay money. Oh God. You go farther in life by the revelation of the father. So if you don't know the father, you can't go. So you are able to go further in life because you know that your father has it all. That's how you're going. But you don't know the father. You don't know where to... You, you, you think you are... You're limited. And if you go... Because your problem sometimes, if I go too far, I may go off course. My dear, you're already off spring before off course. Because that's the problem with you. If I go too far, I may go off course. My dear, your offspring is stronger than your off course. Because in your offspring, there's offset. I'm preaching good. I came with my amen in my spirit. You can sit like a pillar of salt, like the first lady of the state of emergency. It will move me. I'm going to tell you, you have a father. A fa so you can't have that spiritual daddy issues. Because servant described your father to you. You can go and meet your father by yourself and personalize your father. Personalize your father. My daddy, not our daddy again, my daddy, my daddy. You know the, do you know the verse of, you're, you're a good father, I'm looking for the verse. Who knows the verse? 
Who knows the verse? Quick, 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 quick. I need the, there's something. Find the verse of you are a good father. There's something there that. That's it. Oh, I have heard. They think. to you. says I've heard so much of what they think you are. Rumors. Here it says I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you are like. Servants have misrepresented father. That's why distortion, that's why we have of his nature, of his person. These are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of flourish. Put your name there. The days of the songs. So servants have been speaking for a while. Distort. So one man who, one, sorry, one of my guys said to me, I said the first service, you know, it's a prominent preacher of the gospel. Well, he's old. Not, I mean, not, he's in his 50s and my 40s. And he, he, he came to Nigeria to look for me. He's not based here. He's based in the U.S. See, I've been hearing so much about you. My wife said he heard you preach. So I came to Nigeria to look for you. Came to the office, you sat, we spoke. And he's been very nice to me. The last time I saw him, he said to me, you need to calm down. I hear you preach sometimes. It's just that this is your gospel. No, you need to. And I knew where he was going to. So I said to him, sir, come on, come on. you traveled from that place you came from to see me in my office. To see me. That you like my message. And you've been very kind to me, sir. He said, yes. You are dark in complexion, he said, obviously. You are very healthy, obviously. You are fit, obviously. If somebody now tomorrow is describing you as one obese fool moving like this, would you like it? And I'm there saying, um, you are like that sometimes. Would you like it? He did not answer me. Why do you want us to be quiet? When somebody is grossly misrepresenting your father. He took a deep breath. Hmm. So servants have been talking trash about Abba. Sons like flourish are rising up to speak. Let the sons breathe. Don't suffocate them. You owe them that responsibility. sons breathe don't suffocate them you cannot even suffocate me i will shout about it i will scream about it i will yell about it these are not the days of the prophet elijah these are not the days of moses these are the days of the sons of god for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of god and we have not received the spirit of bondage a gift of fear but adoption whether we cry i'm not
not going to stop I'm not going to sit back watch you misrepresent my father I won't attack you but I will fix his identity he's good he's kind his mercies are new every morning he's love great is his faithfulness his faithfulness is not predicated on what we do but on who he is for the shepherd's faithfulness is not predicated on the behavior of the sheep but on the integrity and the character of the shepherd my God is good that thing you are describing is not God the nature of God is known in Christ and in Christ alone period and that's when Mary had a little lamb your seat we're just talking I will suffocate them they will not suffocate And the other side comments and I just laugh. I'm here for a long time. Hey, put come back 20 years. You still hear me preach. He died for me. He died as me. When he was buried, I was buried with him. When he resurrected, I resurrected with him. Now I'm seated in Christ in heavenly places, far and above all principalities and power. Come here 20 years later. You still hear me shouting? Yes, indeed. It will not belong now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of it. You will be able to keep up. And everywhere you look, Ah, yes. Sit. 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 Stick to it, Ivness. Stick will stay here. After I said that, he kept quiet. Can you sit back? Somebody is describing your God as Ahmad, your house older brother. Shongo's distance cousin. Or oh, last father in the Lord. Are you are you are there? Can I say no 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 stop it? That's not who he is. Daddy don't do like that. That may have happened to you. You know, I went somewhere and, and he said, you know, and people, I think Elizabeth was there on Friday. One of my boys lost his wife. Someone said to me, you know, that's how God is. God took her. I said, No, God didn't take her. God received her. He didn't take her. He received her. Didn't mean he take her. He took her. No, no, no. God just, no, no, no. God didn't. He received. Doesn't mean, no. That's not the will of God. There will be many factors. Listen to me. I may not know how to answer the question, but I know where, what, what's not God. I know what's not God. That, I, know, I know that one. This one is not God. Why did it happen? I can't explain, but I'm very sure this is not God. It was, where's, where's, uh, where's my, Dr. Becky, are you here? Can you, yeah, it was her birthday yesterday and we had to show up briefly. The driver took us to a turning and I just started seeing strange houses. So I told my driver, I said, no, I know the organizer of this party. Her name is Alima. She's my child. She's very intelligent. If she knows that, I have, that there's a possibility of me showing up, she cannot put a birthday surprise in this village. Let's get out of this place first. So we rerouted and got to when we enter, I said, hey, this looks like where we are going to and God said to me that's how you trust man and we can't trust God to say I may not be there right now but I know that this is not where God wants me to be why am I here I can't tell you but I'm very sure that he's about to bara it because he knows how to cause everything to work together for my good he didn't kill my dad but if he died he can bring power out of my pain he can bring a message out of my mess he can bring glory out of my story you must know this i know in whom i have believed your seat this is servant that have misrepresented Abba. Let me show you something. Let's close. I'll do this next week. There's a lot to cover. It's okay. First Samuel 16. Can, can, let me read one. You, you see that the person, Tito, the, the person, is this person well? The person who wrote this thing. Everything, go and buy my book. Everything written in the Hagios Graphic was truly stated. But not everything is a statement of truth. 
Everything written in the Hagios Graphe is, is truly stated. But not everything is a statement of truth. This person wrote, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So, God says, spirit of God. Yes. Depart. Okay. And left. God I say, Willy Willy, where are you? Go. Willy Willy from the department of heaven. Where are you? Yeah, I'm here. Does this even make sense to you? That's how servants have grossly misrepresented Abba. When you see this, you want to ask, who said it? In, who said this thing? Was it God declaring that I am the one who did this? Read the next verse. And Saul's so servant said, I ain't to come. Behold, now an evil spirit of the Lord troubled him. It's not even Saul. Though. Saul is a servant. Hmm? The servant of a two steps downward. Not God. A servant, servant said something about your father. You to say, eh. and you a son cannot tell that this thing. You know, really. But what you are saying is that good and evil comes from God. Let's see what Jesus did with demons. Matthew 8, 16. Let's see what Jesus did with demons. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were oppressed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with the word and healed what? That's how Jesus behaves. Matthew 10, verse 1. Put it up there. Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. That's how Jesus behaves. To cast them out and to heal them. Mark 5, I said, let's go, let's go. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So how does Jesus walk? He drives unclean spirit out. He does not send unclean spirit to anybody. Acts chapter 8, verse 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God, for God, that's how God behaves. So what happened to Saul? I explain, it's not hard. The Holy Ghost left Saul and there was a vacuum for a tormented spirit to enter, not from God. Because the presence of darkness is the absence of light. So once the light leaves, darkness takes charge. So it was being oppressed by a demon, not from God. Are you listening to me? Okay, I'll close here. I'll close here. First John chapter 1 verse 5. Let me just do first John chapter 1 verse 5 and I'll close. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is and in him is no. Are you seeing that? Is that is that clear enough? That means there is no God doesn't have the capacity to. Why do you think God will? God has to borrow the tool of the enemy to, to correct his child? Give me the next translation here. This is the life giving message. So, any other message that is not this is not life giving, it's death giving message. We heard him share, and it is still ringing in our ears. We now repeat these words to you God is what? Now you will never find even a trace. Is it clear enough? Do I have one more translation? If you have any other translation. No trace of darkness in him. But they've declared him as the one who is just, he just wakes up. Anything he feels like doing. Just is bipolar. No offend God. Will, no offend. Uh, mm, if anger, mm, 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 you go collect. Oh. And so we approach God afraid. Is he in the right side of the bed today? And this is the message, the message of promise, which we have heard from him. And now we are reporting to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. No, not in any way. No, not in any way. No, not in any way. 
It's not God. It's not God. Yes, it happens, but it's not God. Are you listening to me? Not in what? Not in any way. That's not who God is. Now, the reason I say you need to know your father to go further is this, this thing is adoption. That's the problem. We've been adopted, engrafted. And if I adopt you into a home and I tell you that the owner of this home is in charge of, is the owner of, give me a restaurant, Kali or maybe you call um, Slow, you should know by that adoption that food will never be your problem. Because your mother or your father or the family you have been adopted to, they do food business. So if you are seen drinking Gary on the street, you are misrepresenting your house. Like you're born into the Mercedes, adopted into the Mercedes Benz family, but you hold your Corolla strong. Now they drink fuey. Now they drink fuey. Are you not ashamed? It then means that you don't know your. Because if he gives you a G Wagon G63 AMG Brabus, you now think that fuel is the problem. Worry say God when give you big teeth, go give you the lip to cover them. But your problem is no, 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 Corolla, not the, not the top fuel. And I, that is the poverty mentality because it's first in the mind. Are you, then you're born into the Zuckerberg family. You are now saying, I don't have network, oh, I don't have this, oh, I don't have Tabo. Oh. I want to switch off my data and switch it on like some of you used to do. They will not call you, say, are you, are you sure? That's why the devil does not respect you because he doesn't, you are not behaving like he's not sure. Because you are behaving like, ah, so let me. Some of you think that when you sin, the devil knows because he's omniscient, because you think he's everywhere. It is you that send the message to the devil that you have sinned. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So by the time he now sees you walking in fear and condemnation, he says, ah, ah, come with demon, let's see this guy does shit for sure, sure. <laughs> now you send a message, he's not there everywhere. Now you update him. He's not all knowing. So he wants, do you know your father? Because once you know your father, you will go further. Once you know your father, you will go further. Easy. I'm, I'm, I'll stop here today. Once you know your father, you can go further. The reason you're not making advancement is that you actually have put a cap because that's who you think your father is. The day you know that my father owns it all, all, everything I need, you'll be behaving like Timmy's daughter. Oh, let me give you another example. It's AY's daughter. I don't know if she, she at the end of Teens Church. So, it was her birthday, and I said to her, come, say, Uncle Flourish, Pastor, it's my birthday. I said, I want to give you something. How much? How she mentioned one ridiculous amount like that. It, I was so pissed. I'm like, how this girl don't rate me? <laughs> my sister's child. I said, tell me to give you, say, 15K. <laughs> I didn't talk to her for one month. Because my man, I said, this girl is I broke. <laughs> hey! I said, maybe they, they discussed me for how settings are hard with me. He paid me. So I called. I said, I'll be angry with you. So I told you, ask me for something for your birthday cash. You asked me for 15000 So the mother now said, no, no, no. Say one fifty. She said, oh, 150. And then she got the money. Hello. I am that mother in church this morning that I'm here to tell you. Daddy wants you to ask for more. That's what I'm saying to you. Daddy is saying, you can ask some more. If the reason he has not answered is that thing you are asking is an insult to his fatherhood. He won't answer it. It's an insult to his fatherhood. Just Corolla, Lord. Ole Corolla. Corolla. No, they drink for it. No, they drink for it. No, they drink for it. Father, father, father. Even Nigerian, you say, Ola strong. Thank you.
So he's just wondering, eh? Come on! That's it! Shout it, I have a father! If, if it's only that shout I came for, I will sleep well tonight. One person who gets it, I'm okay. Let me, I, I was not born with silver spoon, no. I got the golden spoon from grace. Yes, so, so some of you, you I, this is how I have navigated God. That's it. No, that's it. Full stop. And it makes you audacious. It makes you richer than the richest of people. So you don't feel inf- inferior, the, the kind of confidence I have. I have it for, for many people. Like if you are with me, you don't need confidence. I am enough confidence for me and my gang. And my confidence is rooted in Christ alone. Why? If it's not in my bloodline, it's in my beloved line. I asked the lady, how are you confident that you have twins? It's not in your family. He said, yes, you are right. I married a man. They only have twins in their family. So if it's not in my bloodline, it's in my beloved line. Are you listening to me? That's the boldness. Why? Well, you know your father. So your mess doesn't stop your father from blessing you. Your situation needs to know you have a father. Akin Laja is my homie from way back. Pastor Dare was at the conference. It's my boy. For a while, I could share this testimony. He didn't know his biological father. Graduated from school, just to say, man, people. My mama never claimed this. I said, don't worry, more the pray. One day she will talk up. So we used to yap him that, ah, your father down with it now. Don't finish. See, see your papa, see your face. Look, I don't get this more. Maybe that. One day we found out his father was the commissioner of police. I think in the neighboring state, or your state, or Ogun State. Ogun State, thank you. From that day, it's all over. As we just see police, he goes, yo, bro, how are you? <laughs> so, what rank are you now? I said, Daddy, move they go. He said, so, so. He said, no, these are my father's boys. They will not see which your father. My father is that from that day. I make sure he's not driving because as he see police, he must park. So why you not dress properly? This is your shoe. Why? He has a father. The fatherhood of once he knew the father, end of discussion. The pro, the devil doesn't want you to know your father. I'm breaking news, he's inside of you. He's not in the mountain, he's inside the fatherhood of God. You have looked at men, chairmen, with women, this and that. You're never trusted in God. It's God and some scheme and some f- that's how you've been doing it. Until you come to the place where faith is your only option, you won't see grace on another level. Until you come to the place where faith is your only option, you won't see grace on another level. Once you get to the point where it is me and my father and Jacob was left alone, that place, end of discussion. Psalms 86, let me close with this. 86 and then we go to my text. I'll continue next week. The fatherhood of God, part two, next week. The father, give me, give me, I need a bottle of water. That's beautiful. You see, this thing is full. It's full. There's no space to add anything to this. It's full. It's full. It's full. Are you saying this? But that, oh Lord, a fool. You're full of compassion. Full, gracious. When you misbehave, he is long suffering. He's not merciful, he's plenteous. No, they are not the same. He's plenteous in mercy and truth, which is grace. Remember the scripture I told you to save at the back of your skull? And of his fullness. That means if you press God, what comes out of him is what? If you, if you hit God, what comes? Mercy. Grace. Grace. So when you go to your father, what are you expecting to get from your father? 
So why do you expect that when I meet him, hey, fire on the mountain, he will just kill me? No, no, no. Because he is full. Psalms 86. But that, oh Lord, a fool of compassion. Gracious. Long suffering. Plenteous in mercy. And of this fullness we have received. No, now. When I say you look like who you worship, that's what I mean. If you worship a God who's always destroying people, you are going to destroy people. If you worship the one who's merciful and gracious, you will become more merciful, more gracious. It will heal your mental problem. It will heal your mental distortion. All the heartbreak and abuse of the past that has made you a crazy man and a crazy woman. All of those things will begin to fade as you expose yourself more to the gospel of God's grace. Sidebar, let me say this. It's not that God doesn't want you to marry, but God loves the man. Young man, it's not because God doesn't want you to marry, but God loves the woman. If you marry like this, you will kill him or you will kill her with your madness. So God is saying, come to the father. Because transformation will precede proliferation. And only the father who is the manufacturer of the product can fix the product. And his tool is grace. The gospel of God's grace. I'm preaching good. You can squeeze your face and say this part of message. That's your problem. I'm just saying the reason you are not married is that God loves the man. He don't want him to shoot himself because of your madness. And God loves, God doesn't want to punish another person's daughter. Because a lot of work needs to be done in your life. So that your delay is an expression of love. For you and for that individual. So this is your prayer. I want to my God. The, mm, 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 mm. Abraham wanted a child. God wanted Abraham, not Abraham. So long as he was still Abraham, God was saying, you are not ready for this. Because transformation will precede proliferation. You want proliferation. God is saying, I want transformation. Because you can only proliferate who you are. I'm teaching good. So now God, in, on this Father's Day, God will put father figures in your life that want to shape you. And shaping is not comfortable. I'm preaching good. Shaping is not comfortable. And because you have not gone through proper shaping and circumcision, you leave a trail of mess anywhere you are going to. Because they, they were not done cutting you well. You couldn't take it. No discipline is pleasurable. But it's profitable. Correct me in the way I want to be corrected. Happy New Year. All the actual best. So God is saying, come, come, come. Stop trying to fix yourself. Let me fix you. Because you need fixing. I'm done. My text. My text is Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. I feel the power of God so strong. So strong. You know the biggest thing I get after preaching? MVP is the tap on my back. Well done. I just received it. I like it's more than a million bucks to me. When God says, you know what? You've done well. It's not your amen. It's not your shout. It's that you you are saving a generation. Kagadi so. She bred ever there. You all sit. You, you just keep turning me on. You get, just sit, sit, sit. I want to preach and see. Unto Adam also and his wife, the, the fatherhood of God. Please, let me remind you that God had rested from his labor at this point. Yes. 
chapter 2, he rested. To now make the rest sweet, he created Adam and Eve to be in charge. So he rested and put a manager of the garden. That's how to properly rest, is to put structures. All my LDC people got it. So it's okay, Adam and Eve. So God had retired from, oh yeah, you're in charge. Out. Choose the tree of life. They went and chose another tree and they became naked. And they started using fig leaves to cover themselves. That's what some of you all are doing, trying to fix yourself. Let me do it by myself. God came out of retirement. The fatherhood of God. And said, let me bring lamb skin. Not coat, coats. So God entered fashion business and said, you know what? They are, they are naked. Oh my God. They don't have this. What am I going to do? Let's kill a lamb. And by killing a lamb and making the skin, he was showing us a shadow and type that only Jesus can cover the nakedness of man who is the lamb of God. And in covering the nakedness of man, what the fatherhood of God is showing us is that I have secured you in the son. Because now you have put on Christ. So when I see Adam, I see him as Christ. In types and shadow. So Adam was locked up, covered in Christ. This is a shadow and type of what Jesus was going to do. The fatherhood of God. God no go shame you to change you. No. God will clothe you as he changes you. God will embarrass you. That is the nature of the Father. As you begin to grow in sonship, in the revelation of sonship, and the awareness, God covers you. He's not going to shame you. And the covering of God means He supplies for you. He protects you. He preserves you. Responsible for you. What we celebrate today is responsible fathers. So it will be happy Father's Day even to women who have become yes. men in their, in their homes. Because what we are celebrating is responsible Father. And what I'm telling you that the fatherhood of God was responsible for protecting you against embarrassment. He's not trying to shame you. He's trying to cover you. Because that's how the Father is. But the problem is do you know the father because the more you know the father you go further by the revelation of the father everyone seated I want us to pray if you can hold your neighbor there's some of you who are already weeping there's some of you who you already feel as strong if you feel like standing it's fine you all have been standing you all keep standing it's alright I'm so good you may not be shouting right now, but listen to me. Like she screamed, I have a father. Stop moving around like you don't have a father. You are not an orphan. You have a father. And I want you to pray this morning. Father, thank you. Because I'm not alone, I have a father. Kobala Medoski, Resete Levede Mereski the bus. Menzoko, I am your source and your sustenance. I'm praying for you. I'm your source and your sustenance. I'm your source and your sustenance. Now, Kappa, now leave your neighbor now and pray for yourself and receive the fatherhood of God because you are his child. Pala Disco, Veradigo Scudova. She prete velebeno, ozuta kaperonduski. Ayup, I have a father. I have a father. Are you praying? Come on. I have a father. I see those hot tears, and that, that's that's that's. This is your time with the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to interrupt this for the next two minutes. This is your time. You have a father. You have a father. I'm screaming at you. Yes, you. You have a father. 
I'm screaming at you. Yes, you. You have a father. Show my dekoshi. You have a father. You have a father. Oh, I can hear you praying. I said you have a father. Pray strong. Lekapandoski. Zekopondoski. Shipralamandoski. Shootabahas. Shootabakamahas. There's a set of people I want to pray for this morning. I want to pray with you. Seats on that. I want you out here. Seats. No, remain standing. Sorry. I mean, stay on your seat. And the prayer point is, I've been doing life on my own. Life was not designed for the believer to do alone without the Father. Ah. Ah. Life was not designed for you to do alone without Abba. I want to pray with you this morning. Your visions, your dreams, everything is just your aspiration. It's all about you. And so you are struggling. I'm bringing you to the place. Father, Abba, I come to you. I'm coming to Abba. I need your help. Like the prodigal saw some of you, I'm coming back home. There's something at home for me. Because the father doesn't run out of stuff. Father, thank you. Pray in your own. Father, I'm coming to you. I'm not doing this without you anymore. I'm not doing this life. I'm not doing this marriage. I'm not doing this job. I'm not doing this stuff without you anymore. I need your help. Oh, are you praying? We're almost done. I have a father. I want you to pray strong. I have. I have a father. Show the bekeba. La baborosco. My source, Abba. Come on, pray. My source, Abba. Are you praying strong? I have a father. He is my source. I'm not doing this without you. Shobokombo de Hiski. Shidi Bikala Haski. Zebra de Meleken. Raski Topokomondo Velatiskis. Abarandieka. Zombe, are you praying? Deploy strength from your father's house. I said you have a father. Log into his strength. Log out of your strength. The Bible says even if my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will pick me up. The Lord will pick. I have a father. Come on. Come on. Come on! You are not naked anymore. You are covered. The fatherhood of God. God is responsible for you. Come on! Shepaka. Suki Kama. I'm not an orphan. I'm not an orphan. I'm not an orphan. They come on. God said He's deploying His resources towards you. I don't know whose word that is. I heard it. I'm deploying my resources. Resources in angelic assistance. I'm deploying resources towards you. I'm deploying mighty resources towards you. The Lord is your light and your salvation. The strength of your life. Your identity is in Him. Come on. 
You have two more minutes. Pray strong. Come on, open up your mouth, pray strong. Maskata. Elekama. Roski di bihata. Shita maha. Elebeke disco. I hear you pray. Some of you are praying, while some of you are watching. Stay there. The Spirit of God said to tell you, take advantage of your father. Take advantage of your father.
Sister, take it. That's it. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. The father. The father is in the room. She go put on over this. Your father owns it all. I deploy the resources of heaven. I had it. I deploy the resource. Oh, keep your hands open. I deploy the supernatural, superabundant resources of heaven over your life, over your ministry, over your businesses, over your destiny, over your projects. In the name of Jesus. Resources of heaven. We deploy the resources of heaven. The de as you go out from here today, people are calling to sort out certain things. That's what I hear. What can I do? How can I help? That's how you know your father is working. When they ask you, how did it happen? My father was working. I decree and declare contracts that were allocated to other people that they have skipped to get the supernatural favor is bringing it to you. Things that people labor, lobby, swear to get, it is supernaturally coming to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. My God, keep your hands open. I deploy supernatural resources. As I hear, so I speak. I deploy supernatural resources in its abundance in its abundance towards your life in the name of Jesus 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 as you get out of church testimonies are coming testimonies are coming you are supernaturally protected I said you are supernaturally protected in the name of Jesus. The pictures on Wednesday. A brother left church two, two Sundays ago. No, last Sunday, we talked about sonship. He said as he was, we we're praying like this. He said, Father, if I'm a son, as I'm traveling, show me. God showed him. That's the cross that fell on his car. There was no way he should have lived from this accident. Give me the other slides. He said to me, that's a BMW, it's a strong car, you should know. He said, I came out of the car, I just removed my seat belt and came out, nothing happened to me. You are kept by God. Now, that's how God does it. You are supernaturally protected. Another brother, testimony, they just started calling me, the jobs that I thought they had forgotten me. I decree this season. I deploy, I heard it, the supernatural provision of God concerning your projects and your assignment in the name of Jesus. Return back with testimonies. Return back with testimonies in the name of Jesus. Now clap your hands, church. Give God praise. Come on, I say give you, give God praise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's let's give let's give to the Lord. Let's give to the Lord. Let's give to the Lord. Amen. LDC, you get a message tomorrow about class or an assignment. All of you just get ready. Something is about to happen. It's going to be awesome. Your gift did not bribe me. Amen. Elders. Elders, you get ready for a strong assignment. Amen. Strong assignment. Some of you will be preaching on Sunday from LDC Wednesdays. As I've said it now, they don't want to come to church. If I catch you, because we're preaching at LDC and we're training preachers, it's powerful. Amen. You're traveling. <laughs> God will not bar it for you. You will bar it on this stage by yourself. So we're going to have a Sunday or even a Wednesday. We'll just have this LDC people just share 
God's word with you. And then you will know that we're training soldiers. Glory to God. Share, not sing. Stay in order. Amen. Glory to God. Get your offerings. Get your givings. Father, I thank you for everyone who's giving today. This is the least you would ever give. Money serves God's purpose for your life. You are fruitful in every way and in all things. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Trisha, are you ready to share Wednesday? Breathe, breathe, breathe. Take it in. Breathe out. That's it. <laughs> Beautiful. Fumbi and um, Funto, get ready. Gabriel. Um, Gabriel and Co. Amen. First time us, please do not rush at the end of the service. We have a beautiful reception for you. Happy birthday again to you, Dr. Becky. God bless you. God bless you. Let's stand and share our, make our declaration and then we close the service. Don't miss Wednesday. It's going to be powerful. Don't miss, if you're on the mainland church, if you're, on, if you're in Abuja, log in, join in one of our churches. Um, glory, glory to God. Gist, join Gist, whatever you need to do. Next week, Sunday, we will continue here and it is the fatherhood of God, part two, and then we'll end the sonship series by God's grace. Amen. It's so sweet. It's too sweet. No problem. Amen. You're a good father. Is who you are. Is who you are. Is who you are. And I'm loved by love. Is who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Hold up a minute. Fathers, I don't want you to walk out like that. There's a father stand there. We just want you to take pictures. We want to celebrate you. If you came with your father or a father figure, drag them there. Let them take pictures. Let's just remember that we celebrated Father's Day this year before the remaining 20 Father's Day come. 74 before we reach our turn again. Glory to God. <laughs> and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. 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 And I'm loved. You are perfect in all of your ways. In the way you love me, perfect in all of your ways. To, to, to me, to me. Sing it again. Yeah. You are perfect in all of your ways. Yeah. Yeah. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. declaration you're going to see the goodness of God so good. I said you are going to see the goodness of God you're going to experience goodness on every side in the name of Jesus let's make the declaration at the count of three one two three go I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I am the redeemed of the Lord all my sins are forgiven I am passionately loved by God I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I... Nothing, nothing dies. I am never stranded. All things are working. To God loves me. And scream Christ. Okay, let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Point your prophetic index finger at your neighbor and say, Charlie, God's goodness and mercies are following you all the long days of your life 
and you are the dwelling of the Lord forever forever it's your boy Pastor Flourish from the Logic Nation never forget God loves you more than the devil hates you have a flourishing week ahead of you with great grace blessing Oof, we are not out of word we're just out of time I hope that word really blessed you we want you to follow us on all our social media platforms subscribe to the youtube channel of the logic church share this word because it's going to bless someone's life like it did bless yours if you don't have a church where you're planted in send us a mail send us a dm we will connect you to any of our churches that is close to where you are if you have not accepted jesus as your lord and savior i want to pray with you say after me lord jesus i believe you died for me I believe you resurrected for my justification. I believe the message of redemption. I believe the message of the gospel. Now come into my heart. Flood my life with your goodness. Flood my life with your peace. Flood my life with your love. Thank you for dying for me. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. If you just accepted Jesus, send us a mail, send us a DM, share your testimonies. Let's know how this is blessing you. Until I come your way again, it's your boy, Pastor Flourish from the Logic Nation. Never forget, God loves you more than the devil hates you. Have a flourishing day ahead of you with great grace. Blessings.